Good afternoon, financial professionals. I'm Jeremy Vidmer, Regional Vice President with E4 Insurance Services, welcoming you to The Brew, building relationships every week. Thanks for tuning in today. For those of you joining The Brew for the first time, welcome. On today's Brew, we're wrapping up our November Focus Planning Series, Long-Term Care Awareness Month. Greg Manns, Regional Sales Director for One America, is here to discuss long-term care. He'll touch on aging demographics, industry trends, stats, solutions, and navigating the silver tsunami. We encourage you to use the chat box or raise your hand to ask questions. Thanks for tuning in. And Greg, thanks for joining us today. You got it. Happy to be here. Well, thanks again, Jeremy. Uh, certainly appreciate your guys' business and your partnership. Uh, and thanks for joining us for uh, Long-Term Care Awareness Month. As mentioned, I'm, I'm Greg Mance. I'm the regional director with One America. I live in the Twin Cities. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is uh, specifically we're going to focus on the, the need for long-term care. So we're going to talk about the silver tsunami that's happening. And then we're going to talk about some potential solutions and efficient solutions using uh, some of the uh, some of your using your clients' assets and some of the, the the very unique options that we have at One America. So maybe just to start with, real quick, if you're not familiar with One America, uh, we are uh, one of the leaders in uh, asset-based long-term care. Uh, we've been selling asset-based long-term care actually since 1988. So we were the first company uh, to come out with the idea of a hybrid policy. That's the uh, you know life insurance long-term care hybrid contract. We're based out of Indianapolis. That's where our home office is. Um, and, uh, you know, we handle all of our claims in the home office. We handle uh, all of our uh, uh, new business and everything in the home office as well. Um, and, you know, we're a highly rated company. We're a mutual company, which means that our, we're owned by our policyholders. Of course, that's very important when hard decisions have to be made at the company level. It's also important from a claim standpoint. You know, uh, being owned by our policyholders, our goal is to be there uh, when the rubber meets the road. Um, as mentioned, our Comdex is uh, is 95 and we're, we're A plus rated. Uh, so we've got a lot of experience in this market. We've been doing this for a long time and we feel like we've got a lot of this process down pretty well. What I want to talk about uh, to start with is this idea of the silver tsunami. Now, you may have heard this phrase. Maybe some of you have heard the phrase peak 65. What peak 65 refers to is it refers to the number of people that are turning 65 right now in this country. Um, if you don't know the, if you don't, if you don't know, or you've never heard this question, we have about 10,000 people turning 65 every single day right now. That is the baby boom generation getting to a point where they're again, starting to retire, turning age 65. The, uh, the vanguard or the front of that generation is getting really, really close to age 80. Uh, so we've got this, this, this oncoming wave of people, this silver tsunami that's happening right now um, that, uh, you know, is, again, is going to start increasing the need for care, going to put a lot of demand and stress on the, the system for providing care. And just to give you an idea of uh, kind of how much, how much this has grown. In the year 2000, we were spending, as a country, about $30 billion on long-term care. Uh, now, I would imagine if, you know, if, if any of us are in the industry back in 2000, if we would have asked that question, we would have said, that's yeah, a lot. We're spending a lot on, on care expenses at that time. But if we fast forward a couple of years, first baby boomer returned 65 in 2011. By 2015, so the first baby boomer at this point is, you know, uh, 70 or, or 69, right? They're not even 70 yet. Uh, we're spending $225 billion on long-term care expenses. That's with only 15 million baby boomers over age 65. So that's a 750% increase over that 15 year span. By the time we get to 2021, so just you know six years later, uh, we've now got 40 million baby boomers over age 65, and we're spending $467 billion on care expenses. So it's another 108% increase. So to say that uh, that this wave is oncoming, I think is, uh, you know, it, it's, this this proves that that's that is the case. Uh, you know, by the time we the first baby boomer turns eighty, that'll be in a couple years. I mean, I don't think it's unrealistic to think that we're going to be spending a trillion dollars on long term care. You know, it could be one and a half trillion, it could be two trillion over the next uh, short uh, you know short time frame. So, the 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 need for care is going to start increasing uh, quite dramatically. 
You know, especially. Rick, I got to. Oh, I got to. Oh, yeah, sorry. I want to com- I want to comment on your uh, your picture of the silver tsunami there. There's still people sitting in the parking lot. So is is that if you true? Go back, <laughs> if you go back to the picture there, I think it's funny. Sometimes maybe we're still sitting in the parking lot with plenty. So <laughs> yeah. well, the wave should, is coming. Pro- that's right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so uh, good. Good catch. Good catch. Good eye. <laughs> it's an eye for detail. Yeah. So if we look at our our claims at One America. This is our actual claims data. Uh, so when we look, look back 35 plus years of claims, we look at the ages at which people claim. Um, if you kind of look at everything from the yellow to the green to the pink, right? Those are the three big slices. You know, we're looking at, you know, roughly 20, uh, 75% of our claims half happen after age 80. So remember, I just said that none of the baby boomers are 80 yet. And uh, most of our claims happen age 80 or afterwards. So what that means then is it means that we're going to have, uh, again, you know, we're going to see the amount of claims jump as the tsunami starts to kind of wash over, wash over everything. This is a, uh, a graph from the state of Minnesota. Uh, we, Minnesota put out a report last year called the Own Your Own Future Report, where they're talking about uh, specifically about Medicaid payments that the state is making for long-term care supportive services. And you can see the blue is basically where they were last year, and the yellow is where they're going to be in about 10 years. Um, so, you know, we're looking at uh, an increase uh, in NF, NF as nursing facilities. The state spending on Medicaid nursing facilities, you know, 700, uh, or, uh, 750 million more, um, or, you know, almost doubling, and the same with assisted living. So it just means again, just further proof that this is this is happening. When we look at the most in-demand jobs over the next decade, uh, we can see that on this this chart, this is from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, that home health care and personal care aides is by far the most in-demand job over the next decade. I mean, it's double what the next one is, which is software developers. Right. And this is uh, you know, we, we kind of joke about this a little bit because this graph was really put together. In 2022, before AI was such a big deal, um, software developers might not even be number two, right? When you start factoring in AI and the fact that a lot of that's going to be a kind of computer program or, or is going to be done by AI. So it's possible this is going to be three times as much as the next one on, on the list. Um, point is, hmm. home health care aids is really going to be the next in de- biggest in-demand job. And that's a result, again, of this, the silver tsunami. When we look at our stats and where we see people getting claims, uh, well, about about 30%, let's say a third of our, our claims have been at home uh, since 2019. As the baby boom generation, the silver tsunami starts to hit the you know the care facilities and uh, just the system in general, we think we're going to see a lot more people starting to get care at home. I don't think it's unrealistic to have 50% of, of home health care, uh, you know, in the next uh, in the next 10, 15 years. Could be 60%, could be 70%. Um, you know, there's facilities being built, but I, I think at the same time, it's going to be very hard for a lot of those facilities to keep up with demand. And, you know, let's be honest, most people want to get care at home anyways. And so one of the things I talk about a lot is uh, long-term care insurance policies are really stay-at-home policies, Right. They're designed to give you the income that you need to, to get the care where you want it and to stay at home as long as you can. So question, uh, is care likely? Well, a lot of us might've seen this statistic before. Uh, 70% of people over age 65 are gonna need some sort of care during their lifetime. Uh, now that doesn't mean they're gonna be a nursing home. Doesn't mean that they're gonna be uh, completely debilitated, but they're gonna need some sort of care. And 20% of those people that are gonna get care are gonna need it for five years or longer. One thing I, I encourage you to think about, though, is when we do planning for people, right, we, we very rarely plan, or at least if someone's married, we're not going to plan individually for each client. Uh, I mean, in some cases you might, but generally we're planning for the couple. And so if we're planning for the couple and 70% of people need care, that means husband has a 70% chance, wife has a 70% chance. What are the odds that either of the two are going to need care? And it's actually no over idea. 90%. No. <laughs> You're way better at math than I am. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, some I did this one time. Somebody said 140. <laughs> percent I thought, well, that's I I, I, I don't Pretty know if that's odds. right, but I like where your head's at. You know, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so it just means it's, okay. it, it's extremely likely right, that we're going to need yeah. some care at some point. Mm-hmm. 
So one of the, 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 the questions I get a lot is how do we start this process with our clients? Uh, I would encourage everybody to use uh, a document that we have, or if you have your own version of this, the CLTC has one as well. Uh, use something like this to get the conversation started. This is our plan for care. And what this is, is it's a, it's a form that the client fills out. Uh, I think it's best used either uh, sent ahead of a meeting or, you know, give it to your clients after the meeting, have them fill it out and come circle back with it next time. Um, but it, it it lets them put pen to paper. And the I, when you start putting pen to paper, it becomes more real. And it helps them identify what care would actually look like. You know, do like some of the questions. Do you believe you could live a long life and need help? Uh, need help from others? Yes or no? Right. Some of the client checks. No. OK, please explain. Right. So it just gives them kind of it gives them just this this realistic uh, example of what life might look like if you need care. You know, if you did need care, where would you like to get it? Who would you like to provide the care? Who would be responsible for coordinating that care? What I really like as well uh, on the second page uh, in the upper left hand corner, it asks them if you needed care and you needed to generate income, what assets would you use first? And the client might say, well, I have an IRA. Oh, that I'm, that I'm going to use. Okay, well, maybe we can reposition that, at least a piece of that, uh, you know, save the rest of it and reposition a piece of it to make care a lot more efficient. Or if your client has old annuities, we could reposition those assets and use use them to make care more efficient. But I think this is just a, a fantastic tool to use. And I encourage you in your long-term care planning, if you don't have something like this, please, please start utilizing this or a, a very similar, similar uh, document. One of the questions, one of the questions I had, Greg, was actually, you know, if a, if an advisor has not entered or has not had these conversations with clients, where's a good place to start? But it seems like this is, and this is a good place for them to pick up maybe where they're a little uncomfortable. Um, I know E4, we have our own, we have our own version of this as well, but good to know okay. that you guys have, have a resource for us too. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I think it'd be good to send out, um, you know, either send out E4's version uh, after this call sure. to everybody. We can sure. attach that. Yep. I think that'd be a, that'd be a great great thing to have. Yeah, and again, you know, whether it says One America or E four, I think just getting <laughs> the conversation started is really the important yep. part, and this is the best tool to do that. Yep, best best tool I've found. And then the other good thing, right, is this is just a fact finder. So, you know, if you're if you haven't started this, uh, you can bring this to Jeremy and to the folks at E four, and they yep. can help you put a plan in place based on the results and in, in the, uh, the, the the way the client filled this out. Right. So you can lean yep. on the experts to do that. Which leads me to my next question. Um, I get this all the time. Greg, who's the ideal client to talk to about care? And I always say, look, it's not about assets. It's not about income. It's not about your demographics. It's really people that have an experience. So, uh, you know, I think it's it's a prudent thing to, con to talk about with everybody. We want to make sure we have that conversation. But the people that are going to be really engaged, that are going to be really uh, focused on putting a solution in place, are the people that have been through the process. If they've had to uh, care for a loved one, uh, if they've had to, uh, you know, help a client fill out or, or a family member fill out a, a, a Medicaid application, uh, if they've, you know, if they've, if they've been through that, if they have their own story, uh, they're going to be much more likely to put something in place and much more likely to be receptive to the topic because once you go through it. You understand how important it is. Um, you know, I, I I can't stress the amount of times I've, I've you know, I, I've had conversations with people and they, you know, on paper, they're the, they're the perfect candidate, but they've never been through it. It just doesn't seem that important to them. Um, so I think that's a number one. That's definitely the case. Right. But also, um, if they haven't had or a, a, as you talk to clients about this, um, you ask them that question. You know, Mrs. Johnson, uh, what is your experience with care? And and people will tell you, you know, I think that's a question we should ask every single time we have this conversation. I did a, a point of sale meeting recently and I, I asked the gentleman and it turns out uh, the reason he was so uh, uh, focused on getting a plan in place and fixing this problem is he provided care for his wife who passed about a year ago. He provided care for a couple of years for her. Um, so it, it definitely uh, it definitely hit home for him and he understood the uh, the importance of having something. I just I just added that too with the you know it's not about assets not about income but it seems when you do start asking clients about uh, their experience you draw it out so even approaching those people who do have assets 
and do have the income, that seems like it might not be something that is necessary. You're going to find the experience that they have just draws them to a solution. Um, oh, even absolutely. if you don't think I mean, about it. Yeah. So how many, I mean, how many times have you heard someone say I'm worth $5 million. I don't need, I don't need long-term care insurance. Right. Right. Uh, well, surprisingly, the people that generally buy the biggest policies from us are the people that have the assets um, yep. because they just want to take the risk off the table entirely. They don't want to they don't want to put all those assets at risk. So they want to just put a solution in place to to stop the uh, stop the bleeding, if you will, if, if yep. what it happens. So what I want to talk about uh, just to kind of to, to end this here in the next uh, 10 minutes or so is how do we put uh, strategies in place? So. At One America, we have two flavors of asset-based long-term care. We can use our annuity policies, or we can use our life insurance option, uh, which we call asset care. The annuities are called annuity care. Life insurance is called asset care. And I want to talk about one of each, and uh, one using uh, people that have existing annuity contracts and how we can put something in place for them, and one with people that have surplus IRA assets and how we can put something in place for those people. So I'll just talk a little bit about annuities here. Uh, uh, our annuity care is a Pension Protection Act compliant long-term care annuity. What that means is it means that uh, the Pension Protection Act put into place, um, you know, put something into place that says if you have the right type of annuity, you can use that annuity 100% tax-free for long-term care purposes. It, that annuity could start out as a, a non-Pension Protection Act annuity. You can transfer it, 1035 exchange it into a Pension Protection Act annuity. And by doing that, you can make all of the gain inside that policy 100% tax-free. So here's just a quick, you know, a quick graphic example of this. So uh, we have a, a, a client with an existing annuity. Maybe they've had this annuity for, you know, 10 years. Maybe it's an annuity that's been on the books for 30 years and it's been you know, it's been rolled over a couple times to different different non-qualified annuities. I should mention as well, this is for non-qualified annuities only, not qualified. Just make that statement. Uh, so you could have a client that has, let's say, 50000 in basis, 150000 in taxable gain. If they exchange that into our annuity care policy, they can then use, again, that money 100% tax-free to pay for long-term care expenses. If we look at how we can structure this, Let's put some real numbers here. So we have this client again, 50,000 basis, 150,000 taxable. We have two ways that we could use our annuity care. We could just do the base annuity by itself. That'd be the first option there. And in that case, you're taking 200 taxable and you're turning it into 200,000 tax free for care. This, the advantage of doing that, we're not adding any additional long-term care benefits there, but the advantage of doing that is that there's instant approval. So if your clients can say no to just five questions, we will approve that uh, that case immediately and immediately give them tax-free money for long-term care. The five questions are very basic. Um, you know, they basically want us wanting to know if, if some if care is going to be needed right away. If we also structure this this way, there's no fees uh, because we're not adding any additional long-term care coverage. So it's just another annuity that they're buying, but allows us to use that money tax-free for care. Uh, and what what is that what is that issue up to? What ages does that issue for? We can do that up to age eighty seven, Jeremy. Jeez. So where we yep. see the most value with this, or where this typically working well, is uh, older clients. Say an eighty two year old client has had an annuity for a long time. They're not in the best of health anymore. They may or may not have a long term care solution already. So we have this annuity we're not going to use in retirement. Let's consider putting it over here. And hey, if we still don't use it in retirement, it's still going to grow. We have an indexed version and we have a, a fixed version, still going to grow. Uh, and you know, if we if we need care, we can access all all the gain, the gain from the existing contract and the gain that's grown up inside the contract. We can get it all tax free for care. If we uh, if we use it, if we don't use it, well, then the the benefit passes to, or the uh, the value passes to the beneficiaries, the exact same as any other annuity would. So it's really kind of a win-win scenario. We're just taking an annuity and moving it over and you know, essentially making it better for the purposes of long-term care, all the way up to age 87. The other option we could do is we could add leverage. And when we add leverage, well, we're going to give the client a lot more money for long-term care. So there's a cost to that, and we're going to have to go through underwriting for that option. Uh, the specific 
uh, option I'm using here is called our annuity care two, but this client, you know, it's $200,000 uh, in their current annuity. Uh, they based on age and everything else, they could potentially roll that over and create up to $800,000 for long-term care. Uh, again, all of it's going to be tax free. And then, uh, the fees are just taken out of the account value. So your client pays this one, one premium they're done. And then, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a guaranteed rate of return as well. And in most cases, your, your clients will still earn money on their money while it's sitting there. Might not be a lot because there's some fees being deducted, but at the end of the day, um, you know, they they can put a substantial long-term care benefit in place, uh, with this strategy, uh, and not have to pay any future premiums. One other benefit of this strategy, uh, most annuities, as you guys probably know, are single life annuities. What's nice with our annuity care options is we can do an exchange. So an exchange has to be like to like, same insureds, has to be the same uh, uh, annuitants. So we can do the, a like to like exchange, but then we can just simply take a, uh, a spouse and we can attach a spouse to the contract for purposes of, of long-term care. So you can take a single life annuity and get both spouses covered uh, for long-term care with that exchange. Who's the, who's the ideal client? I mean, age-wise, what have you what are you guys seeing in terms of ideal clients for this product? Sure, sure. Well, kind of going back to this this two options, right? Um, yep. Option number one, I would say that this is going to be our, again our base annuity only. Probably clients that are seventy-five plus with old annuities are not going to use. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine your book of business if you can. Go out and mine your book of business. See, you know, structure it by the amount of gain inside the policy, by the age of the clients. Look for people with highly appreciated annuities that are older. Those could be the kind of the best clients for this. For the other one, uh, the leveraged option, it's generally going to be a bit younger people, people in their 60s, early 70s. You know, they might have cash, they might just have an old annuity that they're not going to use. Uh, those are sure. really our typical clients for that case. Okay. Okay, and I want to wrap up uh, with uh, another another idea that we have, uh, another pretty unique idea to One America, and it's the idea of using an IRA to fund our long-term care contracts. Uh, so, as you guys might know, uh, there's a lot of IRA money out there. Uh, you know, I, this stat blew my mind when I saw this. Uh, that we expect in the next 20 years, roughly 85 trillion dollars to change hands. That's the, the result of the baby boomer generation controlling most of the wealth and passing away or, you know, starting to pass away in the next next 20 years. And so as that money changes hands, uh, we're going to have a lot of inherited IRAs. And, you know, a lot of these a lot of this money that's in IRAs today, uh, those baby boomers that are healthier and still on a little bit on the younger side, uh, you know, we could look at, at potentially using that money to put protection in place for them. And so this is this is how our process works. We've, we've built a process at One America that allows us to take qualified money uh, or IRA money and fund a long-term care policy. We make one payment or one transfer rather, and then everything's done. The whole idea with this is it's basically an easy button that we can push to put, put a plan in place. So let's say that we've got this, this sample case here. Bill and Sue, both 60 years old, they might have a million dollar uh, IRA. We're gonna take a piece of it, small piece. Let's say it's $200,000. Uh, again, they could have $3 million in their IRA. You know, we don't need to take all of it. We're going to take a piece of it. Use that piece to protect the rest of it. They're going to do a $200,000 transfer. That money is going to come to us at One America. It's not spent. It's just over here at One America now. Their money is still their money. We're going to give an immediate 25% uh, bonus for the purposes of distributing it. So we're essentially taking the two hundred. dollars We're turning it into two fifty. dollars we're going to then pay out the 250 over 10 years. So we're going to reach in, pull out a uh, you know, distribution, uh, one-tenth of that, that, that 250, so 25,000 in this case. We're going to turn it right back around and we're going to put it into our asset care policy. That distribution is going to be taxable because it's money coming out of a qualified plan. But of course, we're spreading the taxes out over 10 years instead of just paying them all at once, which is what we'd have to do if we use that money uh, by itself. So we're spreading the taxes out over 10 years uh, after 10 years, it's completely paid up and done. We manage everything internally. We manage the bonus. We manage the distributions. All you guys have to do is the one-time transfer. And that works out to, for this couple, $111,000 roughly per year 
for long-term care benefits. That's like 90, I think it's like, it's over $9,000 uh, a month uh, that either Bill or Sue could access. This is a joint policy and it covers both of them. So uh, for Bill, he's got 9,000. For Sue, she's got 9,000. If they both needed care, they'd have, we'd actually pay out 18,000 a month in that case. And if we never need care, there's a death benefit here of 221,000 that is tax free to the beneficiaries. So it's a lot like a Roth IRA from the standpoint that we've taken a taxable asset, distributed it and created a tax free asset. Instead, but instead of just being an investment like, a, like most Roth IRAs would be, this is actually a, a life insurance long-term care policy that will pay out a long-term care benefit or a death benefit. I should also just mention uh, that that long-term care benefit, as you see on the screen here, is payable for life. What that means is it means that we have an unlimited policy, meaning our, our long-term care benefits cannot be exhausted. So Bill could take benefits for 20 years, potentially, and Sue would have another 20 years of, of benefits available. There is no maximum on the amount of, of, uh, of coverage and the amount of payments that we can make. There's no cap. Greg, I, I, I know you always love this question, but how does one America do it? That's a question I always get from advisors because I've, I've presented this more than a few times. Uh, they always ask the question, so you guys can make an unlimited lifetime benefit. How does it, how do you do it? Sure. Well, a couple things. Um, number one, it's more expensive, right? It should be. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's the kind of the best benefit you can buy. So it is more expensive than a limited option. Usually, it's about 20 to 25% more than a limited option. But what I find in most cases, if you put you know, a limited option or an unlimited on the table in front of somebody, they're going to gravitate towards the unlimited option. Uh, how do we do it? Well, you know, we've, again, we've done this since 1988. Uh, so a lot of companies used to offer lifetime benefits. They've gotten out of that business. That's really where we've, that's our bread and butter. That's where we focus. And I'm certainly not an actuary, but our actuaries will tell you um, that when you sit with them, that we, the way we manage our book of business is, is two lifetime benefits. Uh, we want to make sure our lifetime benefits are sustainable in being a mutual company, having the experience done the, in doing this. We feel like we've got that process, got that process down pretty well. Um, so it takes a lot of experience to be able to price this correctly. And, uh, you know, we feel that we, 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 we do that. I mean, you guys, and I know you guys just came out with a new product or you, you're restructuring it, but you still have retained that lifetime benefit, which is just incredible to me. Yep, that's right. So we have a, a new version of our asset care policy. Uh, the new version is available um, or in 38 states as of October 21st. Uh, the other states will probably come online sometime in uh, in early to uh, 2025, minus I think California and New York will be quite a bit behind. Uh, but we'll have new versions in those those other in, in the rest of the states. Uh, the new policy was was repriced to uh, you know make it more competitive in most cases. Uh, you know, we're seeing in a lot of cases, we're seeing 10% decreases in premium, maybe even higher. Um, and we've also added some additional benefits that allow those, those benefits to be paid out in a more flexible way, which kind of leads me to this next slide. You know, we always like to say, look, I mean, you know, again, your client's got $5 million, you know, yeah, they have the checkbook to pay for it, but do they know to pay for care, but do they know how to get it right? Do they know how to work it on the back end? One of the things that we do at One America is we have our claims concierge. And that means that when it comes time to make a claim, uh, rather than just uh, you know calling an 800 number at a claims department and hoping to get somebody on the line, um, we have a person that we assign to uh, each, each claim. So let's say it's Jan, okay? And then last I checked, we have about 25 people in our, our claims department that do this. So let's say it's Jan. Jan is the person that works with your client's case. Again, we, we want to be uh, as uh, impactful when the rubber meets the road and be as good as we can when the rubber meets the road when it comes time for claims. So Jan's job is to work with the family. There's no faxing numbers to a black hole, hoping it gets accepted. Everything ends up going through Jan. So Jan is a, a person that can really assist and help throughout the claims process versus just a typical claims experience. And ultimately, when it comes time to, to, get, uh, to get payments, uh, we have the ability to work with a facility directly, which is uh, we can call direct billing. So that, that facility could send Jan a bill, and then Jan can pay the bill kind of on behalf of the clients. It really makes it very simple. Uh, but one of the things that we've changed and added to uh, with the new product is not only do we have that concierge that we've always had, 
but we're also um, allowing benefits to be paid out more flexibly uh, with cash. So we can allow clients to utilize the death benefit portion of their claim. So in that, that previous example, the 221, they can access the 221 in cash benefits. It's going to reduce the amount they get every month. It's about 75% of the uh, total monthly benefit, uh, but they can still access it uh, if need be for cash to provide uh, or to pay family members or uh, provide or, or to pay others that are providing informal care. Uh, that's one of the big changes we've made. Uh, the reason that we've, we've, we've done that is, you know, we, we're a reimbursement company. That's not going to change. That's what we've found is kind of the best way to manage this long term. Uh, again, to your question, how do we do it? Well, that's one of the necessities for offering a lifetime benefit. However, uh, we do recognize that, look, at the very beginning of a claim, things are very hectic. So we've uh, we've kind of provided this cash benefit while people can, while they're figuring it out, right? It's your figure it out money. Uh, if mom needs care, we can access the, 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 the policy. We can get cash benefits to, you know, to the daughter to provide care for mom. Uh, while they're trying to figure out what the better long-term long -term care solution is for mom. So we've added that to the policy. And we've also added the ability to pay independent providers, which means uh, somebody not affiliated with a, fa a facility or a home health care agency. So we're just trying to make it a lot more flexible and robust on the back end uh, to make it, uh, you know, make, make the process as, as useful and as easy as can be for, uh, for, for our clients. Yeah. Oh, great improvement. Yeah. And so with that, guys, I would just like to say thank you. I certainly appreciate the time. Uh, I appreciate your business. And uh, hopefully everyone's got kind of a better understanding of what the silver tsunami is, why this is so important, and a couple of really unique uh, solutions using our annuities or using our IRAs to be as efficient as possible with your clients' assets. Well, thank you, Greg. Um, while we wait here for final questions, I'd like to remind everyone that today's brew and our entire library are recorded and shared on the Brew page on our website at www.e4.insurance. Today's recording will be posted on our Brew page, added to our library, and emailed to advisors later. Uh, checking the chat box here, it looks like uh, for that for the uh, asset care, looks like Josh is asking about underwriting. Has the process changed at all with the new product? So great question. The, the product has changed. The process is the same for underwriting. So the requirements are the same for underwriting. And the process, if, if anyone's not familiar, we start with a phone interview. Uh, clients will go through the phone interview and then we'll either accept the results of the phone interview and approve the case, or we'll ask them to move on to step two, which is a full paramed and uh, full medical records. Uh, we do, I think about 45% of our cases get approved just off the phone interview. So that's okay. that's the same. Nothing has changed there. Very good. Looks like that is the only question. Uh, so just some uh, some announcements here. Due to the holiday next week, there'll be no brew on Wednesday, November 27th. Uh, so our next brew will be on December 4th with Brendan Darone, our CEO and managing partner, and Phil Haug, our senior VP of sales. Looking back on this year's focus planning series and reflect on the growth and knowledge we've implemented in our businesses. Appreciate everyone being here. Thank you, Greg. We'll see you next time on The Brew.